Hello and welcome to Design Tip of the Week from yesimadesigner.com. My name is Martin Perhiniak, and this video is about using multi-state objects for your interactive projects in InDesign. So let me show you how it works, and I will show you exactly how I created this effect. So here in the Buttons and Forms panel, or any of your interactive panels, you will have an option to preview your spread. Once I click on this, we can see exactly how this is going to work. So it will give us this Swift preview. And I have three images. And if I click on any of these, there's an additional text box which comes up with a close button. And you can see that the other two images will fade out. So if I click on the close, it goes back to the uh, original state. I can again click on another one. Another text box comes up. Again, I close. Again, I can close that and I can do the same with the third one. So each time there's a separate text box which comes up. So that so each time there's a separate text box for each of these images and they can all be controlled by just clicking on the images and also by clicking on the close buttons. So let's have a look at this setup. First, I'll show you here in InDesign, the one that I created, and then I'm going to construct it from scratch so you can follow me step by step. So I have three images here, and each of these are turned into buttons. Once I click on one of them, you can see the additional options for this uh, image, and you can see actually they are buttons. So each of these images are already turned into buttons to be able to add the interaction to them and each of them will do two separate actions. First of all, they will make sure that the text frame will appear, and that's for that we are going to use a multi-state object, and it also makes sure that it hides the other two images. Well, if you remember, it's not actually hiding them, it makes it look like they are fading out or reducing their opacity, and the way I achieve that is by having not only once but twice all of these images so if i move this a little bit further away you can see there is another version of it behind with a reduced opacity so whenever i use a button it's going to affect the other images and make the button versions of them hide and that will reveal whatever is behind them which is the 40 percent opacity version of the image and those are not buttons, they are just simply images. So actually we have nine elements here. We have the images twice, both as buttons, behind them as normal image frames. And then we have the multi-state objects, which are the text frame for each of these images, including another button for closing them. That's included in a group. That's the close button, which will also do similarly two actions Again, uh, to go back to the previous state of the multi-state object and also to show or hide uh, the images. So it might still look confusing, but let me go step by step from the beginning and then it will all make sense. So let me just select one of these images. I'm actually going to select all three of them and go to the next page, which is empty at the moment, and I'm going to paste these in. So these are the three images that we are going to work with and I just show you with 100% this is the way they look like. I'm going to already uh, duplicate these so I select them and go to edit copy and then choose edit and choose paste in place. That's going to make sure that the duplicates will be pasted directly on top of the original images. So now if I go to my layers I can see that on this page or spread I have six images and they are actually uh, duplicates I can see it's the same file names so I am going to hide the ones on top with the eye icons and select the ones at the bottom here I'm going to select them I can see those are the ones selected and then going to the opacity here on the top I can type in a value which I would like to use let's say 40 percent so this is going to be for the fade effect that's good, so that's all set up. Now I can turn back the other versions and I can select these one by one. So that's the three on top. And uh, I actually need to do this one by one. So I select the first one and then go to buttons and forms and under the type I can choose button. 
So we are going to convert this uh, version, the one on top, into a button. If you don't have the buttons and forms panel, you can always go to the window menu and under interactive, you will find it. So once you have that open, just choose type button. So that already turned it into a button, but usually I like to name my buttons, especially if you have a lot of interactive elements on a spread, it's good to keep them named. So I'm going to call this image one. Then I select the next one, again, type, button, and call that image two. And I select the third one here, and um, for now I'm just going to close the layers panel so we can see what's happening. And I turn this also into a button, and I call that one image three. So now that we have all three set up, we can first of all add an action for them. So let's select this first one here, and I'm going to choose action and choose show height buttons and forms. So let me select that, and I would like image two and three to be hidden when this button is uh, clicked on. So I'm going to choose the non-visible icon for image two and three. These icons are working like a toggle, so you can switch uh, through four states. One is that it's not affecting the actual item, the other one is to show it, and then also to hide it. So it's actually three different states. I need to use this one, the uh, hide state. Here you can see the names of these states, show, hide, ignore. Now, once that's selected, I can now select the uh, other image as well and add also a similar action. So show, hide buttons and forms. And with this one, I want to hide image one and image three and do the same thing with image three, select the action, show, hide buttons and forms. And with this one, I want to hide image one and two. So this is one part of the functionality that we need to add, but we can already check the preview. If I click here on preview spread, it will give us the preview and it won't work perfectly at the moment because it won't give us the option to go back. So if I click on the first one, it works nicely. So the other two will fade back, but I won't be able to go back to show those images again. If I click on preview spread, I can test it. It works with the others as well, but still I don't have a way to go back. Now, to be able to have that option, we will use the text frames. And let me just set up the first one. I'm using the type tool and I'm going to create a text frame here directly below the image frame. So there's the text frame right there. And before I do anything with this, I'm going to turn this into a multi-state object. For that, we need to use another panel. Under the window menu, interactive, you can find object states. Now this will open up a new panel. Let me just move this here. And here, all we need to do is to click on the convert selection to multi-state object icon. So once I click on that, we will have two states. And in this second state, while that one is selected, double click on the frame and choose type fill with placeholder text. So I'm going to fill it with just a dummy text like that. And you can see now if I have the selection tool in the object states panel, we have state one, which is empty frame, state two, which is a frame with text in it. Now the next step is to have a close button. And for that, we can use anything really what we want. I'm just going to draw that quickly here with the ellipse tool. So I just draw an ellipse and then I can draw also uh, two shapes. I mean, I can even be more accurate. Just select this line, copy, paste in front, and then using the rotation tool, I just rotate it like that and select the whole thing and rotate it 45 degrees. So this is really uh, optional how you do this. You can bring in an image as well for your close button. I just quickly created it here uh, directly in InDesign and I'm going to try to position it in the center of that circle. So now that I have this created, I can make it maybe a little bit smaller, something like that. And I can put uh, create a group from this. So I'm going to press Command G. So it's turned into a group and I can also position it here next to the frame. So that looks quite good as a composition. Now I can select both of these items 
And once I have both of them selected, I can see an additional option here in the object saves panel, this icon here, which means add objects to visible state. So let me just double check that this frame is in state two. Yeah, that's good. And I can see the text that means we are in state two. So once again, I select both of them. I just held down shift and added the close button to my selection. And then if I choose the option add objects to visible state, then it's going to be merged into the object state. So the close button will be part of the object state and specifically in state two. So we can see in state one, there will be no close button. In state two, there will be the close button and also the text inside the text frame. So now that setup is ready, we can go back to our button, the first one, which is called image one, and we will have to add another action there. So choosing from the actions, I can choose an option called go to next state go to next state, it will automatically find the multi-state object, which is the text frame one here, which we should actually call text frame one. So I just go back to it. And here in the object states panel, I just call this text frame one. Okay, so just we are aware of what's happening. When I select the image one button, now it's going to say go to next state with text frame one. Okay. And um, that's the object. And I can just say stop at last state. So it won't be able to go back to the first state. For that, we will have to use the close button. So that's the additional action we added here. And we can have a look at it, how it works now. So clicking on the preview option, let's see how this works. So now that we click on the button, it's going to fade the other two images out and also we we'll show the text frame and we will have the close button there. But because we didn't assign any actions to this close button, we still won't be able to go back. So let me close again the preview and go back to this options here. Now I double click on the uh, multi-state object and then I can select the close button. So double click and then select the close button there. Now this is actually not a button yet. So we have to also convert this to a button. From the buttons and forms on the type, I just select a button. Okay, now we can call this close text frame one. So we know exactly what this button is doing. And then I can choose an action. First of all, we would like the multi-state object to go back to its previous state, which was an empty frame. So go to previous state, and that's for text frame one, and I want to also stop at first state. But that's not enough because we would like to also reveal the other two images. So I choose action, show hide buttons and forms, and then choose to show again image two and three. So this is the show option on them. And I am going to now test this. So remember we added similarly the go to state option and also the show hide buttons on this uh, close button inside the multi-state object. So let me just click on preview and let's see if it works the way we want it to. Uh, create the interaction. So I click on the button, it shows the text frame and the close button. If I click on the close button, it hides the text frame and shows the other two images again. So that's great. Again, we can test it, click on the image and close it. So it works great. Uh, I can do it as many times as, as I want. Now let's do the same thing with the other two images. I'm again going to create a text frame just here directly below the image. And before I add the text, I'm going to turn it into a multi-state object and let's call it text frame two. So that's my text frame two. I double click on it and then I go to type fill with placeholder text. So there's our text for it. And then I need to select the first close button to duplicate it and to use it for the second text frame. So I go to the layers and there I can find the close text frame button. I'm going to copy that, edit, copy, edit, paste. And that's going to create a new version of it, which I can move closer to the second text frame. And then I'm going to select the multi-state object, the second text frame. 
So select both of these together and then embed or include this uh, close button into the second state of that text frame. Just like we did it in the previous example. Just to make sure I go here in the layers panel and I choose the object, the whole close text frame to object. And for that, I am going to add the action, first of all, to show hide buttons and forms. We need to remember show image one and three again, because those will be hidden once we click on image two. And then we have to also add the action to go to previous state for text frame two and stop at first state. But before we test this, we have to remember to do an additional step. Going back to our button, Remember, we only have the show hide buttons option, but we don't actually interact with the second text frame because it wasn't created when we created this button. So we have to go to actions and choose go to next state and we can decide which text frame we want to affect. In this case, text frame two and choose stop at last state. So now we are ready to test the first two buttons. So image one and image two should work perfectly now. And then if it's fine, then we can repeat again the whole workflow with image three. So if I click on this, it opens up, I can go back, okay, click on this one, the fade works, this works, and I can go back. So these two work already perfectly. Now we just have to deal with the third one. So I go back and I will repeat the same steps again using the type tool. I'm going to create the text frame here at the bottom, turn it into a multi-state object. It's important that while you are editing the text frame with the type tool, you won't be able to turn it into an, a multi-state object. You have to use the selection tool, select the frame, and then you can click on the convert selection to multi-state object. Once it's uh, created, we can call this text frame uh, three, like that. And then I'm going to double click on it twice and go to type fill with placeholder text. So again, we have that ready. And then from the layers panel, I just choose close text frame to our button and I'm going to copy and then I'm going to paste it as well. So there's our button created, which we can again move close to this frame right there, select the two of them together, and then put this close button into the object state, state two. And then I can uh, double click on it or go to layers panel and uh, under text frame three, state two, we should have our close text frame three. Once that button is selected here on the right, we can assign the actions. So I'm going to choose show, hide buttons and forms. So once this text frame closes, we have to reveal image one and two. So I need to show them. And also I would like to go to the previous state of this multi-state object, uh, text frame three. I would like to stop at the first state as well. And last but not least, I would like to select this image, the button three on the top. And I would like to assign the action there as well to go to next state and using text frame three, the one assigned to it at below it and stop at last state. So that's all set up now. We can click on preview and let's see if it works. I'm going to test all three of them just to double check, starting with this new one. Yeah, it works. And then we can test the other two as well and they all work perfectly. So the, all the interactions work and um, we actually just repeated the same steps three times. Uh, hopefully this helped you to understand this quite complex workflow. So it's a little bit more advanced technique, but it shows you the possibilities that you can achieve with a bit of combination of buttons and object states whenever you work with interactive projects in InDesign. So that's all I wanted to show you this time here on Design Tip of the Week. I hope you found this useful and make sure to join me next time as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. Also, if you want to learn more about design, check out my in-depth online courses on my website, yesimadesigner.com.